Everyone knows that I like to use a comparison similar to the succession of dynasties to describe the evolution of animals. But strictly speaking, this analogy is not entirely accurate. It's just a way to help people who are unfamiliar with the subject to better understand. In reality, the evolution of any living being is a chaotic process. In general, life constantly generates countless genetic mutations at every moment. These mutations, through accumulation, have a small chance of resulting in new abilities for the organisms. And these new abilities have an even smaller chance of making individuals more adapted to their environment. Life is as abundant as sand in the desert, and there are always a few lucky ones who excel in competition with others, producing more offspring. Eventually, these mutated genes become widespread, and the process of mutation and selection continues based on genes that are better suited to the environment. This leads to changes in organisms, forming new species or outcompeting other organisms for ecological niches. Genetic mutations are purely random, and environmental changes are unpredictable. So, the evolution of animals is not about settling for the present. Life and death are fated, and success or failure lies beyond our control. However, there is a group of animals that has found a unique path amidst this chaotic process. It is the deuterostomes, an unconventional branch within the bilaterally symmetrical animals. Let's go back to the Cambrian period when I mentioned that animals in that era had relatively simple forms. The earliest deuterostomes already had quite unusual appearances. For example, the concept of cloacal fusion has been widely discussed, so let's talk about something else. The early deuterostomes resembled a group of swimming tadpoles. Their greatest evolutionary achievement was the development of several openings on their body's sides. Well, at least for now, these openings seem to have little significance. In modern times, such an evolutionary development would likely lead to rapid extinction. However, in the ancient era of the Cambrian period, these organisms managed to survive. Since these openings had evolved, they should not go to waste. As a result, these early deuterostomes learned to swim with their mouths wide open in the seawater. Water entered through their mouths and flowed out through the openings on their sides where larger food particles could be captured. Some early deuterostomes also filled these openings with filamentous tissues, similar to a filter net. These tissues not only effectively filtered food particles from the seawater, but also increased the surface area for gas exchange, enabling respiration. Thus, the most important adaptation of deuterostomes, the gill slits, fully formed. During the early Cambrian, the ocean was rich and abundant. With their powerful filtering capabilities provided by the gill slits, the early deuterostomes could easily obtain ample food by simply swimming around. Soon, they evolved into fish-like filter feeders. However, this evolutionary strategy brought a serious problem. As the availability of food in the seawater gradually decreased, combined with other factors, their pharyngeal cavity had to become larger and eventually engulfed their entire heads. This led to the loss of most sensory organs and central nervous systems, resulting in the overall degeneration of their nervous systems. With weakened nervous systems, their muscles gradually became less functional, and soon these deuterostomes were eliminated. One prominent example of this is the Vetulicolia, which once thrived, but became one of the first groups of animals to be eliminated during the Cambrian period. The surviving deuterostomes mostly abandoned their swimming lifestyle and settled on the seafloor, where they filter-fed alongside sponges and brachiopods. These deuterostomes evolved into echinoderms and hemichordates. I have discussed echinoderms in a previous video, and I will make a separate video about hemichordates in the future. However, there was a group of deuterostomes that chose a different path by retaining their gill slits and reinforcing their nervous and muscular systems. Since the original neural core, consisting of the ventral nerve cord and the oral nerve ring, had already degenerated in previous stages of evolution, they developed a new central nervous system by transforming the remaining large nerve located on their backs into the dorsal tubular nerve cord to further enhance their mobility.
some of their descendants evolved a resilient rod-like structure within their bodies. This rod-like structure could store and release the kinetic energy generated by body movements, making swimming more energy efficient and compensating for the muscle degeneration. This structure is known as the notochord, and it gave birth to the most legendary group of animals on this planet, the chordates. In the early Cambrian, there was a rapid rise of chordates as they greatly strengthened their notochords and became a major force among the swimming deuterostomes. However, after billions of years of evolution, most of them returned to their ancestral sessile filter feeding lifestyles. These chordates became known as cephalochordates. Today, only two species of lancelets remain as descendants of these chordates. This is mainly because they made a mistake in their evolution. With the continuous enhancement of their locomotor abilities, they extended the notochord all the way to the anterior end of their heads. However, this also occupied too much space in the development of their brains, leading to the comprehensive failure of the reconstruction of their central nervous systems. Fortunately, among the chordates, there was a group that did not make this mistake and became the hope of chordates. Taking a lesson from the cephalochordates, this group of chordates kept the notochord in the posterior part of their bodies and only extended the dorsal tubular nerve cord forward. They also developed enlarged heads and re-established primitive brains, along with the development of visual eyes and more advanced sensory and nervous systems, which ensured further enhancement of their muscles. Through this struggle, most of them returned to their ancestral sessile filter feeding lifestyle. These chordates evolved into tunicates, which, in their early developmental stages, still retain the basic body plan of chordates. However, they quickly undergo metamorphosis, during which their nervous systems degenerate completely, leaving behind a large pharyngeal cavity for filter feeding. Echinoderms, as part of the deuterostome lineage, retain the oral nerve ring and maintain some sensory and motor abilities. One group of echinoderms even evolved as sea cucumbers in an attempt to regain their freedom. It's truly difficult to put into words the perplexing nature of these tunicates. What temptations lie in the depths of the sea that make deuterostomes choose to settle on the seafloor and engage in filter feeding? Well, primarily because during the early Cambrian, most of the nutrients were deposited near the seafloor. The overall openness of the seawater combined with the relatively low oxygen levels at that time, made it clear to these deuterostomes that filter-feeding animals like them had their limits. The more they enhanced their locomotor abilities, the more difficulties they encountered in terms of food and oxygen supply. Thus, giving up locomotion seemed like a wise choice given the circumstances. However, there was a group of deuterostomes that persisted on this path of freedom and eventually evolved into vertebrates. So far, humans have discovered three species of vertebrates from the early Cambrian, Millican Mingia fengawa, Hacoictes, and Shongenix rostratus. The number of fossils is not abundant, and they have all been found in the Meishinchen shales of Yunnan province, China. It's evident how rare these deuterostomes that made it to the end of this path truly are. We should genuinely appreciate these anomalies in the process of evolution, because without them, many animals, including ourselves, would have remained as helpless as drifting seaweed. However, it's important to note that at this stage, vertebrates only possess the notochord and not a true vertebral column. We will discuss the relationship between the notochord and the vertebral column in the future. Nevertheless, it seems that through this seemingly random process of evolution, vertebrates essentially started from scratch and reconstructed a highly adaptable central nervous system suited for bilaterally symmetrical body structures. This laid a solid foundation for the subsequent explosion of sensory, motor, and intellectual capabilities in vertebrates. Moreover, the gill slits of deuterostomes, which initially seemed insignificant, gradually elongated in the lineage of vertebrates. Some of the soft tissues that were originally used to filter food particles evolved into cartilaginous supports for the gill slits, known as gill arches. These seemingly useless gill arches gradually evolved into the most formidable weaponry in the entire animal kingdom. Meanwhile, the trilobite population thrived, 
and the ancestors of sea scorpions had already transformed their appendages, preparing to challenge the animalicarids, and the reign of the cephalopods, which are soft-bodied mollusks, was beginning to emerge. These prosperous animal groups would never have imagined that the seemingly harmless creatures around them had already completed a revolutionary transformation of their body plans. The era of vertebrates is gradually rising.